So in this video, I wanted to create a React app, deploy it to AWS, configure the routing, a domain name, configure S3, CloudFront, and basically the entire thing to have a spa application up and running in the cloud, in AWS. So what we are going to do is first, we are going to create a React application, uh, which we are going to deploy to S3. We are going to configure S3 in order to be publicly available so that anyone can go to our site. Then we are going to set up CloudFront um, to distribute our static content across the globe. And then we are going to configure our domain to be pointing at CloudFront. So let's get started. I have created um, an empty folder here. And the first step that we are going to do is we are going to create a React application. So for that, we can type in npx create react app and we're going to call it react app. So this is basically the most simple way to create a react application. So uh, let's wait a few seconds for this to finish. And you can, of course, use anything else. You can just um, create a um, simple HTML file, you can use Angular view or whatever framework you would like. So let us wait for this to finish. In the meantime, we can go to uh, our AWS account to S3 and create a new bucket. Uh, so what you, will, what, what you need to consider here is that your bucket needs to be the name. So to have the name of your website. So the bucket uh, name needs to be the same as from your website. This is used um, in order to be pointing to the same domain because if you go to a web page and request something, you're requesting something from a certain domain. And our S3 bucket is going to be um, hosting our static content from which domain we are going to get those files. So that's the reason the bucket name needs to have that name. So for this, let us first go to Route 53 and create a hosted zone. So I have already created a hosted zone here, but you can create your own one. So what you need to do is either you need to register a domain or you could register the domain with another um, service like Namecheap, for example, and configure the name servers there. So what you would need to do is create a hosted zone. I have created a hosted zone uh, content brainy. And what you would need to do, if you have registered your domain on uh, some other resource, you would need to copy those name servers into that other domain. I have created a video that exactly explains that in five to 10 minutes. So if you need that, you can check out the other video that is linked to this one. So let us continue here. I'm going to create a sub uh, subdomain here. Let's call it example.contentbrainy.com. It can be, um, let's say, we're going to create it in EU Central 1 Frankfurt. And we're also going to remove the block all public access here. You can um, leave everything else as it is. And we're going to click on create bucket. I forgot you need to acknowledge this and we can click on create bucket. So let us type in example. And this is our example page now. So there are a few more things we need to configure here. First of all, we need to statically host our content. So for that, uh, we need to turn on static web hosting. But if we are going to deliver our content over CloudFront, CloudFront is going to take care of that. And we can actually leave this as it is. The other thing that we will need to do is we will need to go to permissions and we will need to create the bucket policy. So let us do that. You will need to click on edit and paste in the bucket policy. So I have copied this um, from the standard AWS documentation. And this is actually for our app.contentbrainy.com. And in this case, it's going to be for example. Exam so it needs to be exactly the name of our bucket. And what this is going to allow, uh, it is going to allow any access, so a get access to our S3 bucket 
originating from anywhere. Um, so in this case, there is a condition uh, for a referrer. So this means that you can only refer this if you have a referrer of appcontentbrainy.com. But we are going to remove that condition in order to, because this is just going to be available from anywhere. Now we can save this and great. So now we have got our bucket policy and anything that is inside of that bucket should be publicly available. We can go back to our React app and we can see that um, our app has created something. We have our React app. So the next thing we can do is create a build file. So in order to do that, we're going to run npm run build. So let us do that npm run build oops i forgot to navigate into our folder and let's run it again so now it's going to execute the script react scripts build which is going to generate our static files that we're going to host on s3 the next step is going to be to push this to S3. In this case, we are going to do it manually, but you could configure a CI CD pipeline to do that. I have created another video that exactly explains this process of uh, building and pushing a React application to S3. So uh, let us actually go to a folder now. Inside of source, we are going to have a build folder with all our static files. Um, let us go back to our objects and actually upload all of that. Let's drag and drop all of this and that should be it. Click on upload and our files should be uploading now. Okay, the upload was successful. Great. So what we could do now is actually test if this is working. As you remembered, we don't need this web static hosting, but we're going to enable it um, just in order to test it on our S3 bucket. So index.html is our entry point here. And click Save Changes. If we go to our objects and we go to our index.js, we can copy this file and we see that our React app is actually running here. There is nothing else to it, which is kind of strange. Okay, for some reason we couldn't open it over our index.html file, but for what you can do is just go to static web hosting and click on this link here. So this is our React application, and as you can see, it's HTTP, which we are also going to fix uh, with uh, our CloudFront distribution. Okay, let's disable this now and go to our next step, creating our CloudFront distribution. So for that, type in CloudFront. Okay, cloud front, and we're going to create a new distribution. Get started. So for our origin domain name, uh, we're going to use our example here. Uh, but sometimes you need to um, take care of this because this is going to be our global S3 location. But our S3 location is actually not global. It is in um, as I remember Frankfurt. So the problem that can arise through this is that it's not going to propagate um, directly to our S3 bucket. This is mostly resolved within one or two days until everything uh, propagates to each location. But one way how you can avoid this is actually not use the global property here, but rather use the local one. So this is an example how it should look like. So S3 dot eu central one so that's what we need to change um, in our cloud front distribution here so let us go to s3 so we are in frankfurt which is going to be eu central one and you can leave everything else as it is okay let us continue um, you can leave everything else as it is i also like for example to redirect from http to https and you have a lot of caching and other type of stuff of options here, uh, which I'm not really going to go into as of now. You can also use a custom certificate, but I'm going to use the default CloudFront one. So that should be actually it. We should be able now to create our distribution. 
What we can also do is uh, we can add certain behaviors um, in order to return, for example, access control origins or stuff like that. So for example, you can go on edit and you can configure, for example, the origin request policy. Um, so for example, that only uh, access to S3 is allowed and access to S3 without CloudFront is not allowed and so on. But I'm not going to do this as of now. But one really interesting thing that uh, you can also do is, for example, in case that you're hosting some um, fonts or stuff like that, um, another really interesting thing to do is to go into permissions here and the course origin resource sharing where you can do basically the following, which is going to create course headers. Um, for example, if you see those errors in your browser for course not allowed and stuff like that, this may this mostly comes when you're loading some fonts or, um, for example, Font Awesome has this problem. Uh, this is basically the way how you resolve it, because if there are no access headers specified in the request, none will be returned as well. So this is a way to avoid this error. So normally CloudFront takes some time to propagate changes. And if you change your content on S3, it's also going to take some time for that. So how you can save time on that is going to invalidations, click on create invalidation, and you can invalidate your objects. So this means that um, they're going to be removed from the cache and replaced with the actual new content. So if you specify a slash and star, you're basically going to invalidate all objects. So while clicking on that, um, this should take effect quite quickly, within a few seconds actually, and your cache should be deleted and the new objects should be served now. Okay, so our invalidation is complete. And what we can do now is go back to um, our CloudFront distribution. Um, let's copy the domain name and click enter. And yeah, that's our React app. If we, for example, use HTTP, we are going to be redirected to HTTPS. So it's working. Uh, one last thing that's left to do is go to Route 53 and actually create a new record set. So we are going to use example, example.contentbrainy.com. Uh, it is going to be an A type and we're going to have an alias. So this is going to go to CloudFront distribution and this is going to be our distribution. Let's create the record set and create. So example content brainy is pointing to that. Okay, this doesn't seem quite correct. I copied this wrongly. Okay, I guess um, that I somehow copied this wrong. So let's copy it again. Go back here, click on edit let's replace that value yeah that's actually the value we need and now this is also going to take some time to propagate but you can always try so it's not yet there but um, give it some time this can actually take up to a day or so but mostly it is available within 10 to 15 minutes depending on um, your domain and your location but basically that's it our domain is up and running so let us go once through it again. First of all, we created an S3 bucket. Um, that S3 bucket is going to uh, be in a certain region. We are going to have our static React app with it. With it. Uh, we are going to configure our permissions to turn everything here off. We are also going to create our bucket policy and we have also created our cross origin resource sharing policy. Then we have created our CloudFront distribution, our CloudFront distribution um, contain some basic rule sets and it is pointing to our S3 distribution after which we have created our hosted zone with route 53 and we have created here a subdomain example.contentbrainy that is pointing to our CloudFront distribution. So basically that sums it up. I hope this video was useful and you have learned a lot. Um, for all the stuff that could be expanded on this one, I have created other videos, for example, creating a CI CD pipeline in which you can automate all of those processes and also using um, other hosting services or, uh, for example, if you're using Namecheap or something like that.
for your domain names. So I hope it was useful and you learned a lot. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.